joy or happiness, success or failure, peace or dismay. The foundations of our life rest on the words we receive. A word of hope and guidance, translated from the Temple of Solomon in Brazil. You are listening to a word of faith with Bishop Macedo. Do you know who the Lord Jesus is? For the blind man, he's light. For the starving, he's the bread of life. For the thirsty, he's the fountain of living water. For the sick, he's healing. For the lonely, he's a faithful friend. For the accused, he's a lawyer. For the lost, he's the savior. For the wandering, he's the way. For the deceived, he's the truth. For the dead, he is life. The Lord Jesus is everything. Hello, my friends. A very good morning. May God bless you in an abundant manner. The lives of each of you and your loved ones and your relatives. Excuse me. Let me get rid of the comments. Let me get rid of those who are attention seekers. Well, look. The word which God gives us today says there in the book of 1 John chapter 5 verse 4 which says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Because Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Meaning, those who overcome the world are not those who profess a certain religion, who are faithful to a church, to a denomination. Those who overcome the world are not those who are led by mankind. No. Those who overcome are those who are born of God. As Jesus said to Nicodemus, Jesus said to Nicodemus, who was an extremely religious man, a master of the law, ruler of the law. He was respected in his position, his work. He was a man who was well educated. And with all his knowledge, Nicodemus was not born of God. And Jesus said to him, Look, Nicodemus, if you are not born of the water and of the Spirit, then you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So this is what makes the difference in the lives of people who believe and those who think they believe, unfortunately. Many truthfully believe and are saved. They are born of God. Others think that they believe because they mix feelings, they involve emotions, and when they go there right at the end, those people, you find out they're fallen and prostrate, destroyed. But the Apostle of Love, the Apostle John says that for whatever is born of God, born of God, there is no greater glory in this world than to be born of God. And the baptism with the Holy Spirit is a testimony that one is born of God. When they are born of the Holy Spirit, 
when they are baptized with the Holy Spirit, then they are a new person. They are born of God. They are now a child of God. And while they are not born of God, they are not children of God. They are not. A son, a daughter of God is those or are those who are born of God, born of the water and of the Spirit as it's written. So when we strengthen the idea and we stimulate people to seek the baptism with the Holy Spirit, it's for this, that they may have an experience with God, that they may know their Father because they don't know Him. Many are within the church and not just members, pastors, bishops, pastors, wives, bishops, wives, many of them, many of them, unfortunately, shamefully. It's with a lot of pain and heaviness that I say this, but it's the reality. Who knows? Who knows? Someone right now in this instant may wake up to this because this is the cause of your weakness, your reason for loss. You were always victorious, victorious in your conquest in the material world, but spiritual conquests which are more important because material conquests, they stay behind. All the conquerors of the past remained in history and that's it. They're dead in their sins. But those who conquered the state of being a child of God, those who conquered to have the privilege of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, these truthfully are children of God and they overcome the world. They overcome the world. I overcame the world. I have overcome the world. I have overcome. Even with the challenges, of course, we won't overcome without battles, without wars. We will not overcome with ease. None of this. We will overcome with war, with challenges, difficulties, tribulations, in persecutions, with hatred, the hatred. Many people who hate us people who want bad things for us, we overcome it all. <laughs> Look, this laughter is not of irony. This laughter is of the joy of the soul because only those who are born of God know this. And this is what we try to share with you. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Overcomes the world. He doesn't overcome these little things. No, he overcomes the world and remains victorious. He doesn't lose because many overcome their needs, their problems, but they don't overcome the world. They just overcome certain battles, but not the world. We overcome the world. Those who are of God overcome the world. Those who are born of God, born of the water and the Spirit, overcome the world and these are the victorious the ones who overcome the world look at the victory which overcomes the world it's our faith so our victory is not a golden crown our victory is not luxurious cars not a luxury lifestyle which people try to get around here no our victory is our faith because even before whippings and hatred and persecutions, we remain firm and strong. Even before the injustices, we maintain ourselves firm and strong. Those obviously who are not born of God keep running after the gold, run after money, because money gives for certain moments a sense of security. But when this problem like the pandemic comes around, then 
those who have a lot of money but a lot of money are asking for the mercy of God oh I want because I want to breathe a bit of oxygen and they are living like this in the hands of the doctors and obviously suffering the consequences but not just those who have money and those who don't have everyone suffers calamity comes to everyone but those who are born of God those who are born of God have this victory their victory is faith this faith is the seal the stamp the sign of the Holy Spirit within us this is the great sign that the Holy Spirit is in us it's faith that permanent faith not that faith we could say filled with emotions that sensational faith you know that emotional faith not that faith where the person sings and cries before the altar when they leave that place their problems come back to them then they immediately fall and remain fallen and prostrate why because that faith is emotional that is the natural faith and the natural faith does not keep you remaining in faith you only remain in faith the person who lives in faith and by faith and from faith to faith which is the Holy Spirit which gives us the Holy Spirit is a spirit of faith and he does not give us this faith he doesn't give it to everyone he gives to those who seek those who make the effort for example we are now in this fast of Daniel people are letting go of their entertainment and they are diving their minds into seeking the Holy Spirit. They are diving their minds into the biblical information, the thoughts of God. And these people obviously become strong, firmed on a solid faith, a faith which sustains in the moments of tribulation. So, this is our victory. This is the sign of our victory. You see that it's so strong, but so strong that Paul, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul was a lonely and single man. And he, to take the gospel to other people, he suffered persecution, hatred, and etc even from his own people. And finally, he was thrown into a dungeon. And in the dungeon, in the dungeon, there he would do his needs. He would eat. They would throw food for him and etc. They would go down and put it in a can for him. And he would eat. He would urinate and do everything. He would live there. However, he was not discouraged, but on the contrary, he always remained in faith, always remained in this victory, the faith. He said, I know my Redeemer lives. He didn't say, I felt, I feel my Redeemer. No. He was in the midst of rubbish. He was in the midst of filth, physical rubbish and filth in prison in Rome however he with that firmness said I know my Redeemer lives meaning he did not feel it he did not feel his Redeemer he knew that his Redeemer lived within him and he was in a spiritual state which was so elevated where he said for me it doesn't matter if I live I will suffer for my Lord but I will remain working and if I die then it's gain to me so the truth is my friend when we live in faith and by faith when we live in faith and by faith we have 
this victory. We carry this victory within us. We don't depend on other people. We simply depend on God in the person of the Holy Spirit. That's why it's worth it for a person to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. It's not worth it. It's everything. It's, it's worth everything for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit because this is what will preserve you for all eternity. Only those, pay attention, only those who are born of God have eternal life because God is the eternal Father and His children are eternal. Keep this one. If you are born of the Holy Spirit, you will be eternal. If you are not born of the Holy Spirit, you will remain suffering and without hope in the future of your soul. But here it is available to everyone. He who believes and is baptized will be saved for all eternity. It's what Jesus left guaranteed for us, promised. We end up here and tomorrow we'll be back in the name of Jesus. Until then. I doubted who I was. I didn't really have um, a sense of direction. Um, I kind of just did things to please people. I was just existing you know, just living day by day and not really have any purpose for my life. There was a meeting that I attended and I actually heard that if I had the Holy Spirit, then everything else would be added on to me. I didn't need to have this void inside of me and that I'll be complete. I decided to cut off all social media so I was not doing any I had no connection with the outside world at all. Every time that I had on my hands was just to be seeking God, to be thinking of the things of God. I was reading my Bible, meditating on the Word. Um, I would wake up in the middle, middle of the night, I'll seek God at 3 a.m. in the morning, 12 midnight, I'll be every midnight, I'll seek God. With the um, Liberty Radio, I'll be on there at 10 o'clock listening with the bishop, participating, even sometimes when the meeting is finished, I wouldn't even realize that it finished because I'd still be seeking when the service is over on the radio. And I just seek and seek because I wanted so much to be in communion with God. I wanted to know God and for to have the assurance that God is with me and that my life will be totally transformed. Sometimes I'll be driving and I'll be seeking God. I'll be in the kitchen cooking. My mind was always on God and it continued to be like that because I realized that that was the most important thing that mattered to me. Nothing else that I had done or had been in um, contact with before meant anything to me other than just having the assurance that God is with me and God is inside of me. I pushed because I knew that God had to see the effort and the sacrifice that I was putting in there to call his attention, that I had the assurance that God was with me. It was actually on my journey to the meeting that I received the Holy Spirit. And, it, and there, I can't, words cannot describe how I felt because I had the assurance that this is it. I just felt like it was just me and God and I just had that peace and the assurance inside of me. And there and then I knew that God was with me and everything was going to be fine. I had that calmness. I left the meeting and till today, I still have that joy and that calmness inside of me. I'm a, you know, nothing phases me now. I don't worry about anything. I don't let nothing, nothing stops me. If I want to do something, I'll go ahead and I'll do it because I know who God has made me to be today. It's not that person from before who was on, on show of direction, did not have any sense of direction, did not know who I was. Today, I'm fulfilled. I know who I am in Christ. I know where I'm going. I know what God's purpose for my life is. And I'm just blessed. I'm just so happy. It sure did pay off. The Fast of Daniel is the abstinence from all secular information such as media, entertainment, music and literature for 21 days with the aim of achieving something greater, the Holy Spirit. During the Fast of Daniel, you will develop an intimate communion with God. 
But before getting to know what you should do during the fast, you must understand what you should not do. Exclude all unnecessary and superficial activities from your life, the ones that divert your focus from God. Exclude mere entertainment or distractions that add nothing to you. What should you do during the fast of Daniel? Meditate on the Word of God every day. Go to the church as often as you can during these 21 days. Have your personal moments with God at home. Pray, fast, and absorb spiritual content. Follow Bishop Macedo's blog. Take part in the fast of Daniel and observe changes in your actions and reactions. Find the answer you have been looking for for so long. The fast of Daniel. 21 days to be disconnected from the world and connected to the Spirit of God. Are you just repeating everything that's been said to you? No, no one, one can, can help, help you. you. You'll, You'll never succeed in life. life. Your, Your pains, pains are just normal. normal. If you're feeling down, just go out. It's, it's all in your mind. mind. Anxiety is just part of everyday life. life. Wait, this is not you. Don't let what others say define what you think. We can help you. Come and see for yourself. This is your UCKG timetable, helping you to make a new beginning. Mondays, a meeting focused on achieving more in your financial life. Tuesdays, prayers for healing. Wednesdays, a meeting teaching you to develop in your spiritual life. Thursdays, a special prayer for the family. Friday, a service for your spiritual deliverance. Sundays, reconnect with God, the main meeting for your spiritual strength. Died 
on the cross for me the burden of my sins you took away you healed my pain and gave me life